Hi, I'm Molly Thurston with Pearl Agricultural Consulting, and today I'm joined by Evan Esch from the Okanagan Kootenai Sterile Insect Release Program. Today, Evan and I are going to be talking about the biology and management of codling moth, which is a significant pest of palm fruit in the Okanagan Valley. Both apples and pears are affected by this insect pest. We will also be discussing how to use the BC DAS system to predict the emergence of codling moth from their overwintering stage as a full grown larva on the trees. Codling moths spend the winter in cocoons on the trunks of apple and pear trees. They can spin their cocoons up in apple bins or they can be on cut down wood from infested apple orchards or prunings. In the springtime, Moths emerge from these cocoons and start to fly typically in May, depending where you are in the valley. If the moths mate successfully, the females will lay eggs on the leaves and fruitlets of your apple and pear trees. 10 to 14 days later, these eggs will hatch and tunnel into the fruitlets, where they feed on the nutritious seeds of the developing fruit. Once the larvae completes its development inside the fruit, it will leave the fruit and emerge later that year or again the following season. Once the larvae are inside the fruit, it's very difficult for them to be targeted by insecticides. So in order to control this pest, it is critical to get the eggs or young larvae before they enter your fruit and before damage occurs. Pheromone traps are an important tool for monitoring codling moth populations. The pheromone traps the SIR program hangs in your orchards monitor the number of sterile and wild insects that are flying in your orchard. Sterile insects are marked with a red dye that shows up internally when they're squished. Wild moths don't have this dye inside them, and when they're squished, they turn green. The number of wild moths that we catch in your traps indicates the size of a coddling moth population in your orchard. However, traps aren't the best tool for telling us when to spray. Instead, the BC DAS system degree day models indicate the best time for targeting eggs and young larvae with insecticides. Coddling moths have two to three generations each year, depending on the year. However, controlling the first coddling moth generation is the most important, because if this population is unchecked, it can grow very rapidly, especially in hot years. Each generation has a flight period that can last up to six weeks. Depending upon the size of the coddling moth population in your orchard, growers may need to keep their fruit covered with a protective residue of pesticides for an entire generation. If a grower has a smaller population, one or two well-timed sprays may be enough to control this pest. If a grower has a low coddling moth population, the sterile insects released by the SIR program should be enough to keep the pest under control. Pheromone traps are an important way to monitor coddling moth populations. However, like every tool, they are not perfect. There are situations where coddling moths can cause damage to your orchard and they will not be caught in your trap. Pheromone traps are no substitute from being in your orchard and having eyes on your fruit looking for damage. Mating disruption is another tool that complements sterile insect release. These two tools work complementary to interrupt coddling moth mating. If you want to use mating disruption in your orchard, please contact the SRI program for pest management recommendations. Organic growers have fewer tools to control coddling moth than conventional growers. Virus, entrust, and horticultural oil are tools that need to be used in combination to control coddling moth infestations. Contact SIR for specific advice regarding organic coddling moth control. The goal of the SIR program is to support local apple and pear growers to manage coddling moth with fewer pesticides. If you have any questions or concerns about coddling moth in your orchard or in your neighborhood, contact the SIR program through our website or through your local SIR supervisor. The BC DAS model for codling moth predicts the emergence of adult moths, including egg-laying females. Within the BC DAS model, the cumulative percentage of adult emergence, along with egg-laying females, is shown for the past eight days as well as the next 42 days. It's critical that growers go out and monitor their orchards looking for any signs of codling moth stings or damage. Growers should be watching the codling moth model on BC DAS looking for the degree days that signal the start of the egg laying period at 230 degree days. As mentioned by Evan, the peak egg laying will occur between 300 and 500 degree days. It's critical that growers are covered during this time, particularly those with a high population of codling moth. There are a number of management recommendations provided by the BC DAS system. 
the management recommendations are separated into two categories. Management for pesticide applications under an SIR model, such as what we have here in the Okanagan Valley, and management for SIR plus mating disruption when growers are using both tools in their orchard. Growers will notice on the DAS spray guide for codling moth that pesticide products are represented with red, yellow, and green bars. These bars are representative of studies that were done against the toxicology of these products on beneficial insects present in the orchard. Growers can look at the number of assessments that have been made against the various pesticide products and use this in order to inform their product choices, giving them the best opportunity to preserve beneficials in the orchard, creating a balance of biocontrol. The DAS model for codling moth will provide you with cultural information along with the biology of this pest. So growers can always visit the model for more information or visit the Tree Fruit Production Guide or SIR website to better understand the life cycle and development of codling moth. Thank you for joining us in this video about codling moth life cycle biology and management. Please join us again for future videos in our series.